Hello, Facebook Live, St. Paul's Evening Prayer, Faithful Followers. We'll get rolling in a few minutes with Evening Prayer. Our reading tonight is going to be from the Gospel of Matthew. If you'd like to find the Gospel of Matthew, and guess what part of the Gospel of Matthew? You guessed it, Easter-ish themed, uh, the last chapter. And our psalm tonight is going to be Psalm 149. If you want to get any of that prepared, if not, no worries. Um, I'm going to read it and uh, I can carry you along with me. Good evening. If you are tuning in, uh, we'll get started in just a few minutes with a few announcements and then we'll um, head straight into evening prayer right to We'll begin in just a few minutes. Um, evening prayer coming to you live. Facebook. Our gospel reading tonight is going to be from the 28th chapter of Matthew. And our psalm is Psalm 149. Psalm 149. All right, everyone. Well, why don't we get started? Uh, I'll begin with just a few announcements. Um, the first announcement is just an update on where we are with our Sunday worship. Um, as you know, um, we are not able anymore to live stream from the church building, from the St. Paul's worship space. Um, and that is uh, uh, according to the instructions of our bishop. She wants to make sure that all of us are doing everything we can to keep people from gathering, to keep people from, um, you know, uh, perhaps potentially uh, spreading COVID-19. So this is an effort to keep uh, people from gathering in groups. And I honor and re respect that, um, that decision of hers. It does mean, however, that we have to figure out a, a new way to worship. On Sunday mornings. Uh, she is not suspending worship. She just wants everybody to know that. We're not suspending worship. We're just suspending the live streaming or any recordings from the church building. Um, and so your staff has been brainstorming. We've been observing other um, models of worship uh, from different churches around the country and around the diocese. And we do believe that we have a plan here in place. It's probably going to be via Zoom. Um, but it'll also be a, you'll also be able to see it on uh, Facebook Live as well as from our website. Um, so do pay attention. Tomorrow in our uh, coming up on Gray Street, there should be more details about what Sunday worship will look like. 
um, and we may put out a, another announcement or, or something like that. But uh, just just pay attention. Uh, we will worship at 10 o'clock on Sunday. We're just trying to figure out what that'll look like. And as soon as we know what that will look like, we will let you know. Um, but it, it should be pretty familiar to you. Um, and then the second thing that I want to talk about is just uh, the whole nature of, um, of prayer, of evening prayer. Uh, why do we... Why do we come together for evening prayer? Why do we come together for morning prayer or noonday prayer? Um, well, as you know, um, the, from, from early on, uh, the psalmists mentioned coming together to pray to God morning, noon, and night. In the morning, in the noontime, and at nighttime, I make my prayer to you, the psalmist says. So there's an indication that this rhythm of prayer has been around for centuries and centuries. Um, and if you were to visit a monastery, you would find that um, their entire day, the way that these people live, is structured around the idea of prayer. And St. Benedict, who, um, you know, the, the father of Benedictine spirituality, had a certain number of hours where you should work, where you should eat, when you should study, and when you pray. So it seems like today, prayer... Um, times of prayer like this are kind of an interruption to the day or they're inserted into our day and then we just continue with work and our typical practice. Um, but really, prayer is intended to remind us that the day and the night belongs to God. And then we work our regular routines and our regular life into those prayer cycles. Um, so I think that prayer is important, especially now, when it's important to establish rhythms, to have rhythms in your life, to have rhythms in your day, because our natural rhythms have been interrupted, no doubt. And prayer is a way, just like sleeping and waking, prayer is another rhythm that you can incorporate into your life, into your, um, kind of into, to attend to your spiritual health. Um, so that's why we come together in prayer, right? And that's why we're here this evening for evening prayer. So let's get started. Let's begin with our examines. Just close your eyes. And just become aware of your breathing. And maybe as you become aware of your breathing, you become aware of the top of each breath. And as you exhale, become aware of the bottom of each breath. Those are just natural places to rest your awareness. A space to calm down and to allow your spirit to settle. Inhale. Exhale. Become aware of the different parts of your breathing and where you feel that movement in your body. And bring your awareness now to those very first moments of your day. Maybe the sun was rising. Maybe you were up before the sun. Where was God present? Now move ahead in your day to the 10, 10.30 hour. And 
place your awareness in that time and notice where God was present. Now move ahead to noon, to 12 or 12.30. What was God up to in those moments? Now move to three o'clock, three or three thirty. What gifts did God bring to you in those moments? Now move ahead to the present moment. Bring your attention back to your hands in your lap or on your legs. Or bring your attention to the muscles around your eyes, your mouth, your jaw. Check in with your shoulders. And feel how God is present now as you come to a place of balance and safety into a time of prayer and stillness. On your next exhale, you can open your eyes. And we'll begin with evening prayer. Page 115 in the prayer book. Yours is the day, O God. Yours also the night. You established the moon and the sun. You fixed all the boundaries of the earth. You made both summer and winter. Seek him who made the Pleiades and Orion and turns deep darkness into the morning and darkens the day into night who calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out upon the surface of the earth. The Lord is his name. And turning the page, O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. And we say together this canticle for light. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold your vesper light, 
We sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices. O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. The psalm appointed for tonight is Psalm 149. Psalm 149, if you're in your prayer book, it's on page 807. Psalm 149, we'll read in unison. Hallelujah. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise in the congregation of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in his maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people and adorns the poor with victory. Let the faithful rejoice in triumph. Let them be joyful on their beds. Let the praises of God be in their throat and a two-edged sword in their hand to wreak vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings in chains and their nobles with links of iron, to inflict on them the judgment decreed. This is glory for all his faithful people. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And our reading tonight is from the Gospel according to Matthew, um, and is the case for all of the readings in Holy Week. They have a very strong resurrection theme. So, this will be the last chapter of Matthew, chapter 28 beginning with verse 16. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the ages. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So here we have the very, 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 very end of chapter 16, I mean, um, of chapter 28 of the entire Gospel of Matthew. And um, there's something really important about the way these um, Gospels end. This one ends with the Great Commission, uh, with Jesus telling his disciples to go out into the world to baptize and to teach and to command them to do everything that Jesus commanded them. And what were the things that Jesus commanded them? Well, based on what I remember, it was to love one another. It was to heal the sick. It was to um, set the captives free. So it was a message of freedom and healing and wholeness. And this is what Jesus is telling his disciples to go out into the world and proclaim. That's the final word of the Gospel of Matthew, and of course, that they're not going to be doing this alone, but Jesus is going to be with them. And I think that's a very strong statement for you and I, as we live into our own experience of being disciples, even now when we are quarantined, even now when we have to face what, uh, what our faith looks like, and um, what discipleship looks like for us. We trust that Jesus is living into his promise to be present with us, even in these times. 
But my imagination goes to a different place in this gospel. So I want to talk a little bit about that. It's verse 17. Um, when the disciples saw Jesus, they worshipped him. Okay, got it. But some doubted. A very short sentence that's very powerful. When the eleven disciples saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. So even in this resurrection experience, and even as they are moving to Galilee, to this new place, um, they bring different experiences with them of what faith looks like. Some of them worship and some doubt. Some of them worship and some bring uncertainty with them. Some bring devotion and faithfulness and some bring hesitancy. So not everybody was completely on board. They brought a multiplicity of faith experiences with them as they move toward Jesus, toward this new place of being. But it's interesting, isn't it, that Jesus still met them there. And I certainly know that I've had times when I doubt, even now. Um, I'm not always super certain of my faith. I don't always have everything figured out. And even as I move into what Jesus is calling me to do and us to do as a people, um, there's hesitancy, there's fear, there's worry, there's concern, there's anxiety. And I think that's perfectly natural because when Jesus calls us to follow, it can be scary and it can cause us to have uh, a wide range of emotions. But that's the thing about discipleship, isn't it? Discipleship does not promise an absence of doubt. Discipleship does not promise an absence of doubt. Somebody once said that the opposite of faith is not doubt. The opposite of faith is certainty. So feelings of doubt and hesitancy can be an ingredient of faith. But the reality is that we still move forward and we move into those times because this is hard stuff. Let's face it, what we're dealing with is hard. And then layer on the, the different um, layers of, you know, being a teacher if you're a parent or parenting right now with your kids at home or people who are ill, suffering and sick who can't access um, uh, their loved ones the way they might be able to in a normal situation. I mean, there's just a lot of, uh, there's a lot to this. There is a lot to this. And so we take heart in knowing that Jesus doesn't separate those people out who have doubt, right? He doesn't say, oh, some of you are doubting, eh, uh, you're out. He doesn't do that. He gives the same set of instructions to all of them. And he gives the same set of instructions to all of us. And the way I interpret that, it sounds like this. Hey, all of you who are doubting, all of you who are rock solid, all of you who are ang anxious, scared, fearful, worried, all of you, all of you together come to me. And then the same set of instructions is given. And it's still to go. It's the command to go out into the world and be living reflections of the love of Christ. And that's good news, right? It means that Jesus is going to meet us and accept us where we are on our journey. And wow, what a journey this is. And I'm glad to be on it with you. And I know, I believe with my whole heart that Jesus is there holding our hand because that's the promised. Know that I will be with you unto the ages of ages. Thanks be to God. So we respond to our gospel with a 
mechanical and traditionally an evening prayer. It's uh, the Magnificat or the Song of Simeon. So let's say the Song of Simeon on page 120. Both Simeon and Mary represent those people who had faith and they were true to the journey. Page 120. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we'll say together uh, the set of prayers on page 122. And your response is, we entreat you, O Lord. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, we entreat you, O Lord. That your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill, we entreat you, O Lord. That we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses, we entreat you, O Lord. That there may be peace to your church and to the whole world, we entreat you, O Lord, that we may depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of St. Paul, Mary, and all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. We entreat you, O Lord. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way, kindle our hearts and awaken hope, that we may know you as you are revealed in Scripture in the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. And now we offer prayers for our community, especially those from St. Paul's who have asked for our prayers. For all healthcare professionals, especially Joe, Michelle, Sydney, Susan, Barbara, Kent, Devin, Radcliffe, Kip, Shelby, Rachel. Are there others? We pray for those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Jamie, Mary, Barbara, Bishop Goff, Beecham, Brittany, Allie, Caitlin, Kevin, Joseph, Wiley, Cody, and those we name now. We pray for Linda, for Judy. For all who suffer from COVID-19, for healing, strength.
And we pray for those who have died, especially Luli, Brother Scott, Ann Gamble, and Ronald Edward. For whom or for what shall we now pray? We pray especially for our leaders, our president, for those counseling him. We pray for wisdom, for insight. We pray for peace and patience in our own hearts, in our homes. And we give thanks for the blessings that sneak in and surprise us. And for the ways that you are present in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And we pray together on page 126. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. The ageless mountains are full of your glory, the vast seas swell with your might. The shining skies expand beyond our imagining. So we pause to praise. We wait in wonder. We listen to learn of the mountain glory within us, of the sea force in our veins, of love's shining infinity. Grant us the grace, O God, to serve the inner, inner universe of souls among us. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon you and those you love this evening and always. Amen. Take care, everyone. Have a beautiful night, and I will see you back here tomorrow.